Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to a new installment of a series here on HN we call Annotated. Now with Annotated, we go into the how, why, and explain behind some of the most popular current and upcoming film and television franchises. And with this installment of Annotated, we'll be talking about Penny Dreadful and the upcoming new spiritual successor series, Penny Dreadful City of Angels, which is premiering soon on Showtime. And with this, we decided to really cover the characters and concepts from the previous Penny Dreadful show leading up to the new series, because even on its own, it's an amazing show, but there's a lot to go into with concepts, mythical characters, and events, which may or may not be referenced or featured at some point with City of Angels. So regardless of a crossover, the old show is fantastic and worth highlighting, so when the opportunity arose, we decided to take it. But hopefully this gets you guys either into the series or more interested in the series if you've maybe seen one episode. So let us know what you guys think and certain things you'd like to see us cover. And with all that said and done, let's get into it. With the new series Penny Dreadful City of Angels premiering on April 26th, we at H&E decided to cover characters and concepts from the previous Penny Dreadful series which aired from May 2014 to June 2016. And while the series is described as a spiritual successor to the original series, it's possible certain concepts, mythical characters, and events will be referenced or featured at some point in City of Angels. Now regardless of a crossover, the Penny Dreadful series is fantastic, and I thought it was worth highlighting when the opportunity arose, which has, basically with this month of not a lot going on. And in this installment of Penny Dreadful Annotated, we'll focus on Frankenstein's creature. Now, in Penny Dreadful, Frankenstein was a mad scientist obsessed with life and death, as he had poor health and his mother died when he was young. Driven by his research to create a bridge between life and death through eternal life, he eventually revived the corpse with success. Now, unlike Frankenstein's future attempts at immortals, this creature was reanimated through the stitching of several body parts not necessarily originating from him. Now, when he was kind of reanimated, if you want to call it that, he experienced unbelievable amounts of physical pain upon his creation and unfortunately was abandoned by his creator Frankenstein. And from here, the creature was taken in by an older actor named Vincent Brand. Now, Brand provided the creature with work at a local theater where he could remain out of public sight, yet still productive and learn. And after becoming friends with Brand, the creature adopted the name of Caliban for a time before later on taking the alias of John Clare. Now due to the reanimation process, the creature has enhanced physical abilities such as strength and speed compared to normal humans. He also has various scarrings across his head and body with yellow eyes as well from the reanimation process and how he was stitched together. And while he's aware of his artificial nature, he actually has a lot of emotion and that's actually the focus of his character throughout the series usually being emotional desires or his emotional kind of actions, if you want to call it that, which drives a lot of things he does throughout the series because the character desires a lot of love and companionship, which at one point even escalates to him demanding Frankenstein making him an immortal wife, which doesn't really go as expected. It, but, you know, maybe that might be a side effect of individuals being reborn through Frankenstein's process as he's not the only immortal creature shown to have fits of rage. Now, shockingly, the Penny Dreadful interpretation of Frankenstein's creature is actually pretty accurate and more so accurate than many pop culture appearances. And this is usually due to the original description from Mary Shelley being overlooked by the portrayal of Boris Karloff. <laughs> And in Shelley's original description, the creature was brought to life through chemistry, alchemy, and an electrical storm. And while the creature is rather ugly, it still desired to fit within society and is, like in the Penny Dreadful series, considered emotional. However, the creature becomes shunned by humanity, which causes it to eventually resent that of its creator. And with the Karloff portrayal, the creature is more zombie-like with a flat-topped head and bolts on his neck. And this portrayal has become very popular and even popularized to the point where the creature sometimes accidentally gets the name of Frankenstein. And the skin coloration for this portrayal is also more of a grayish green 
And while considered one of the most iconic fictional monsters of all time, there have been multiple interpretations to choose from, not only Shelley or Karloff's depictions in either live action, animation, or books. So I hope that helps you guys learn a bit about Frankenstein's creature and Penny Dreadful. Check out the series if you guys are interested. It's fantastic and has more characters from like Penny Dreadful type era gothic novels such as Frankenstein's creature, werewolves, vampires, all those things. So check it out and stay tuned for Penny Dreadful City of Angels when it premieres April 26th on Showtime.